My name is Sebastian Spiegler and I'm a data scientist at SwiftKey. Our daily work includes building infrastructure for storing, processing, analyzing large data sets um, such as language data and usage statistics. So um, SwiftKey is an innovative startup uh, which builds world-class language technology. Um, it is best known for SwiftKey, the keyboard app, which was the number one sold app on Google Play in 2012. To power um, SwiftKey's keyboard features um, like text prediction, completion and correction, uh, we build custom language models and uh, those language models are built in our language pipeline and for this we use um, crawled web data and we use conversational data. A good portion of our data comes from a collaboration with the University of Cambridge and this um, is a static data set. Uh, we constantly recrawl data for specific languages to improve our coverage and to improve and the quality and update the language models. When we recrawl language data, we have to identify good seed URLs and we have to set up our crawlers and we have to monitor the crawlers and then we have to look at the, the quality of the data we, we gather. And this is uh, most of the time very time consuming. The common crawl produces and maintains an open repository of large parts of the internet and it allows to cost effectively access terabytes of data and it makes it um, available on Amazon Web Services. I first came across this data set in 2012 when I was looking for publicly available data. Although the, the common crawl is only a fraction of data available um, from the internet, it's uh, freely available and it's, it's, still enough, it's still a large enough data set. And um, it makes it interesting uh, for, for any individual or business to run um, a script on, on this data and, and test an idea or um, build something new and innovative. And um, I thought I thought that this is a quite um, appealing data source and the, the work the foundation does is, is, is a great, great job. I looked at the, the entire 2012 corpus and I was specifically interested in the distribution of top level domains and media types and the encodings of documents and the general structure of the corpus and its representativeness with respect to the entire internet. It turned out that the, the 2012 corpus is a representative snapshot based on the, on the distribution of top-level domains. About 210 terabytes of raw data and about 4 billion documents and 40 million distinct, distinct second-level domains um, are represented. And although more than half of the, of the top-level domains are from the .com domain, it doesn't mean that the, the corpus is mostly in English since a lot of websites are re registered under the, the .com domain and, and therefore uh, you can expect um, a breadth of documents in different languages. So another thing I discovered was that uh, more than 90% of the data is in HTML and the remaining part are images, are code like JavaScript and cascading style sheets or XML. What surprised me uh, in my research was that a large proportion of the data comes from YouTube, Blogspot, WordPress and Amazon. And it turned out that the crawler was fine-tuned for those websites because those websites contain a lot of reviews, comments and blog entries. And especially blog entries can be in, in multiple languages. The, the big picture conclusions from my research are that it takes little effort and little cost to run any kind of analytics across this corpus without the hurdle of crawling or storing the data yourself. And the index I generated will be available so someone can actually build on the, the research I've done. Swiftkey currently supports 60 languages and we add languages every month to this list. The common crawl corpus allows us to build language models for new languages more easily because our new languages are less and less represented in the internet and it takes away the hurdle of defining seed URLs and crawling the data ourselves. So my work provides a statistical overview of the 2012 corpus and 
and inverted index of top and second level domains, content type, character encoding, and archives in which websites are stored. This information is helpful to access parts of the corpus directly and will make it easier for any other business or individual to use the 2012 corpus. Open data is vital for research and innovation. It decreases the monopoly on infrastructure and data held by only a few large companies today. Open data lowers barriers to market entry for new startups and allows existing businesses to cost-effectively compete. The details of this analysis can be found on the Common Crawl website and blog and my personal research can be found on the websites of the University of Bristol.